wheel of this smart new Oldsmobile. For performance, here's the star. This is the rocket engine car. Too tyrannic, through and through. It's as high dramatic, too. When you take the wheel of this Oldsmobile, there's a big new thrill for you. That's it. Okay, kids, we're off the air. Good show. Let's kill those lights over there. Let's clear the set for the next show. Good show. Thanks, boss. Golly, Johnny, you were in great voice today. Oh, you're so sweet to say so. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so true. <laughs> Hello, Hi, Billy. Hi. Hi, all. Here's another batch of fan letters for Lucille and Johnny. Oh. Thanks, Billy. Golly, look at them all. Hey, here's one from our sponsor. Oh. Maybe you better open that one first. <laughs> Good idea. Dear Lucille and Johnny, you are cordially invited to make a personal visit to the Oldsmobile plant in Lansing, Michigan. Oh, Johnny, look! To meet the men and women and see the machines that build the famous rocket engine. Gee, and it's signed by Mr. S.E. Skinner, general manager of Oldsmobile. <laughs> How about that? I'd like to see that rocket engine plant myself. I understand it's the largest and most modern high compression engine plant in the world. It sure is, and it costs millions of dollars. Oh, that's what I understand. Well, I'll see you kids later. So long, Hal. So long. Johnny, if you'll wait till I change, I'll have lunch with you. Okay, swell. Then we can read these letters together. See you in ten minutes. Hi, Steve. Well, hello, Johnny. Come on in. See the show? Oh, I didn't have time. I've been all tied up with these interplanetary experiments. Interplanetary? That's right. Well, you read in the papers about how the Army is getting radar signals returned from the surface of the moon. Well, it's the same thing with our experiments. You mean you're trying to tune in on broadcasts from the moon and the planets? Sure. And you'd be surprised at the things we pick up with this experimental and research equipment. Really? Excuse me, Johnny. Research lab, Steve speaking. Okay, I'll be right in. Well, I've got to run down to Studio B, Johnny, so uh, make yourself at home. Okay, I will. I'm just waiting for Lucille. We're going out to lunch. signals from the moon and the planets. He must think I'm crazy to believe that. most prompt, ma, ma bob, meb. We will speak in one of the languages of the Earth people, because you will soon be using it again, for the next day or so. Ma bib. I mean, yes, sir. So for the time being, we will forget the Marsonian tongue. Marsonian tongue? So please rehearse as much Earth as possible. Earth people? So that you will be proficient oh, in no. its use. It can't be. I have orders to send you on a special mission to the planet Earth. As usual, you will take a flying disc. You will take off from this point and land approximately here. 
Then, it is. From this point, it's Mars. I've tuned in Mars. Where your mission hey, Steve, begins. come here, quick, look. Now, the reason for this special mission is this. For some time now, we in the Interplanetary Intelligence Department have been greatly concerned over the tremendous scientific discoveries and advancements of the Earth people. That's true. They now know about the atom and they the next know... Next thing we know, they will be sending explorers to invade us here on Mars. But they don't have the flying disk. How could they? With rockets. They do have rockets. That's right. I'd forgotten about the rockets. We don't dare forget anything or overlook any possibility. But what if the Earth people did come? We visit them occasionally, although they don't know that we do. That's different. We don't try to change their habits. But can you imagine what would happen on Mars if the Earth people came up? First thing you know, they'd have us chewing gum, reading comic magazines. Our airwaves would be full of soap operas, bebop music, and our super television sets would carry advertising commercials in color. No. So you see, we must stop the possibility of an invasion from Earth by rockets. If we don't, we might even end up paying income taxes. So your job is to go down to Earth as quickly as possible. Find out how far they've progressed in the rocket industry. And you know the rest. Sabotage? Yes, that's it. If necessary, use this. Now, here is the plan. Hello. Hello. Operator, get me the FBI. No, make it the United States Army and hurry. Wait. Get me the President of the United States instead. You see, there's a man coming down here from Mars and... No, I don't want the Chief Operator. I... Oh, never mind. She'd never believe me anyway. Nobody would. Johnny, I've been looking everywhere for you. I'm ready. Oh, and I've checked the schedule. We can go to Lansing, Michigan tomorrow and see the rocket engine plant. Say, have I got something to tell you? What? I just found out that... Oh, what's the use? Even you wouldn't believe this. Come on. Johnny, what's on your mind? Is something bothering you? Oh, nothing that you'd understand. Hmm, this looks interesting. What is it? It's about the rocket engine. Like that one right over there. Listen, the rocket engine is the direct result of the work of Mr. Charles F. Kettering. The research on high compression engines took more than 30 years. The rocket engine owes its tremendous power to its high compression design, plus outstanding mechanical efficiency. In outward appearance, this revolutionary new engine looks much like any other. However, there's a world of difference inside and a world of difference in the performance of the Oldsmobile rocket. For example, high compression... Lucille, look! 
He's here. Who's here? The man from Mars. Mars? Yes. Yes, that's who it is. Oh, Johnny, you and that imagination of yours. And I know why he's here, too. What? But it won't do him any good. And if nobody will believe me, I'll... I'll fight him alone. Why, I'll be the lone rocketeer. The lo... Oh, no. How do you do, Mr. Martin? Someone else to see you, Mr. Clark. Oh. Hello, Lucille and Johnny. Nice to see you again. Hello, Mr. Clark. Are you all ready? Mm-hmm. Lucille, this is Mr. Martin. He's going to join us on our little trip. Mr. Martin, may I present Lucille and Johnny, better known as the Oldsmobile Singing Sweetheart. How do you do, Mr. Martin? It's a pleasure. Martin, I know who you are. Oh, you do? Are you sure? Yes, and you're in the wrong place. These rocket engines are built to supply powered automobiles. They don't drive the kind of rockets you think. Well, that's very interesting. Here are some glasses you'll wear when we get into the plant. And here are your visitor's passes. Mm-hmm, that's right. Now, let's see. I think first you'd all be interested in seeing our model layout of the entire plant. All done in miniature, but to the exact scale. Now, this section here is the scale model of the brand new rocket engine plant. Why, why, it's just like a toy. It's not a toy, Lucille. It's a tool. It's a plan for efficiency. You see, long before the millions of dollars were spent on the actual plant, the methods engineers laid out and built this scale model in order to determine the best possible location for each production machine and every foot of conveyor line. Look at all those little men and machines. Actually, Lucille, there are more than 3,000 individual pieces in this layout. The way they're laid out represents over a year of careful planning on the part of our engineers, superintendents, and plant foremen. The men who would actually be responsible for the operation when production got underway. A year? Mm-hmm. And as you can imagine, during that time, they made hundreds of changes, improvements, and refinements before the plan was finished. For example, there were many new ideas for production methods, as well as for brand new machines. Machines entirely new to the industry. This is a plan that represents the last word in the scientific and efficient production of the newest, most revolutionary, and the most powerful engine ever installed in an Oldsmobile, the rocket. I see. What's that over there? Excuse me. Well, perhaps you'll understand it better when we actually see the batteries of big new transfer machines the ultra-efficient conveyor systems, the super-sensitive inspecting devices, and everything else that makes this the world's most outstanding modern engine plant. And here's something else. When we're actually in the plant, I know you'll be impressed by the wide, clear aisles that represent just one of the many features designed for the safety and convenience of the people, the folks who work here. You see, since the rocket engine plant was to be entirely new, all the 246,000 square feet of it, planning it from scratch became kind of an engineer's dream in reality. I mean, such things as the lighting equipment could be the latest type of industrial fluorescent. The result is more and better light without creating glare. And believe me, good lighting is important for the type of precision work we do here. Why, even the windows are of special tinted glass designed to eliminate glare and heat from the sun. But that's not all. Again, for the benefit of those of us who work here, this new plant is decorated with a specially developed color scheme. We're also pretty proud of our ultra-modern air exhaust system. It handles 265,000 cubic feet of air every single minute. It means completely clean air for everyone, in every part of the plant, at all times. Now, watch this. My, that suction is strong. Yes, Lucille, our marvelous air exhaust system is important for two reasons. 
First, we want clean, dust-proof air for the health and comfort of the employees. And the second reason is this. Because the rocket engine is built to such a fine degree of absolute precision, not even the tiniest particle of abrasive dust is allowed to remain in the air. Now, look at this. Conveyors under the floor. As fast as the chips fall, they are literally carried away. This conveyor system has the capacity to carry away more than four tons of chips an hour. Why, all this is wonderful. I call this housekeeping in the modern way. All very efficient. Well, as I pointed out before, inasmuch as the rocket engine itself was entirely new in design, the plant, too, had to be entirely new and advanced in every detail. So every piece of equipment is ultra-modern. Uh-huh. For example, take this big machine right here. It's known as an automatic transfer machine. It's used for milling and boring the cylinder blocks. The engine blocks are processed through a whole series of these big machines. The first one takes the rough castings and automatically sends them through a whole series of milling, pulling, and reaming operations, all automatically. The lights on the control panel indicate the position, the progress of each block in the machine. This big machine is 86 feet long and is equipped with 20 separate stations, all operating simultaneously by one operator. Here again, the light panel reports the progress of each block within the ingenious machine. Incidentally, this machine contains more than five miles of intricate wiring leading to such mechanisms as the one that automatically gives the block a 90-degree turn so it can be milled at both ends. At another point, the block is electrically somersaulted so that the lower surfaces may be machined. Frankly, these amazing machines, some of which have as many as 90 cutting tools operating at the same time, are the envy of the entire industry. Some of these automatic machines are used for work on the cylinder heads some for work on the exhaust manifolds, and of course, some are for machining the connecting rods and other basic parts of the engine. The connecting rods in the rocket engine are extra sturdy yet light in weight. They are made in the I-beam type of construction with extremely high quality steel. Gee, this is exciting. And those automatic machines are just, well, really futuramic. Tell me, don't those machines ever make a mistake? Well, just to be sure they don't, the plant is completely equipped with the latest and most accurate super-automatic inspection devices known. I see. That practically ensures full-volume quality production. Right. For instance, there's an inspection machine that is used to check and mark the exact size of the bores as each block comes off the conveyor line. First, the block is hydraulically locked in proper position. Then four gauging spindles are lowered into the bores. Each spindle is equipped with four special air jets. Each jet gives a separate diameter check, which is accurately shown by floats in the sensitive glass tubes on the charts. Not only are tolerances held to within one quarter of a thousandth of an inch, but the exact size of each bore is recorded in the block itself. The pistons that fit into the cylinder bores are accurately measured and classified according to size. You see, we match the correct size pistons with each bore to obtain maximum power and economy. This worker is reading a teletype message, which indicates the proper size of pistons and their order of assembly in the block. There's a special inspection device for checking the connecting rods and even the volume of the combustion chambers in the cylinder heads. This machine is the most accurate testing device in the industry and works on the same principle as a pipe organ using sound waves as a measuring device. And these are only a few of the many super-automatic inspection devices that maintain the absolute perfection of every part of the engine. And just to be doubly sure, every few hours the super-gauges themselves are checked for accuracy against a master gauge. Tell me, why is it so terribly important that every part of the engine is made to such a, well, precise degree? You know, to the thousandth of an inch. Well, that's what makes possible the smooth-powered, high-compression rocket engine. That's why this brand-new plant, with its more than 300 machines, 
is the only one in the world that can build an engine to meet the exacting specifications of the Oldsmobile rocket. Uh-huh. So this is the only place in the world where rocket engines can be built, huh? That makes my job that much easier. Not while I'm around. And Lucille, because we do have this modern plant, the facilities to build this engine, it means that as an Oldsmobile owner, you can enjoy the quiet, smooth, effortless, economic performance of a high compression engine. An engine as futuramic in design as the car is futuramic in style. And I repeat, that's only possible because of this plant, which was completely designed and built to solve the precision problems in the manufacturing of an engine as superbly singular as the rocket. Oh, I see. Hey, that Martin guy's gone. I'd better find him before it's too late. No, you don't. I told you I was on to you. What is the matter with you? I was a little hungry. I couldn't resist. Mars bars. Look, I know why you're here and what you're trying to do. I even know who sent you. Well, in that case, I'll have to finish my job sooner than I planned. We'd better go back and join the others. By all means. Excuse me, where does that conveyor go? Well, it goes to practically every spot in the plant. You see, we have about four miles of conveyor in this plant. Conveyors of all types. Materials are carried directly to each step of the job in every part of the plant. Marvelous. We're pretty proud of it ourselves. It helps us turn out one rocket engine every minute. Well, I'll be seeing you. Wait a minute, mister. I think you ought to know that this man is from... Yes? Ah, oh, never mind. He's gone again. Was there anything wrong with that? I gotta catch him. Now, here is the beginning of our final assembly line. Look, it's 476 feet long. You'll notice that here, the conveyor is flush with the floor. That means that the men can easily walk completely around the engine at any time. And notice, too, that all the parts and sub-assemblies are brought to within easy reach of the workman's fingertips. You see, convenient material handling is a very important part of this unique plant. Lucille, Martin's gone again. I've looked all over. Oh, Johnny, why don't you relax? Oh, there he is. Say, I got some wonderful pictures. Got some fine material, too. You have? I'm glad you have, Mr. Martin. But uh, let's finish our tour, shall we? By all means. Because of the perfect balancing of the crankshaft and flywheel assembly in this operation, the effect of centrifugal force is canceled. <laughs> Which means? <laughs> well, Lucille, in non-technical language, it simply means that because of the perfect balance of the rocket engine, vibration is reduced to an absolute minimum. The engine operates smoothly, quietly, at all speeds. And what's more, it stays that way for life. It's just like soaring through space. Soaring through space, eh? May I borrow your notebook, Mr. Martin? I'd like to make a note, too. Well, I, um, thank you. Excuse me. A 
as you know, the hydraulic valve lifters on the rocket engine automatically maintain a zero lash. Therefore... Oh, just a minute. Uh, again, it's too technical for me. What do you mean by zero lash? Well, Lucille, zero lash simply adjusts the valves of your engine automatically, which means more efficient engine operation and lower service costs because of longer valve life. And, of course, you have the soft hush, the always quiet whisper of the rocket engine. And here's something else that means ultra smoothness. The automatic spark control on the rocket automatically regulates the engine timing according to the speed of the car as well as the load on the engine. I didn't know that every little part of an engine could mean so much. Well, it does. That's why every single part has to be made and assembled with the greatest possible skill and precision. There are 53 major stations on this final assembly line. And as you can see, the work is all beautifully coordinated with the right part always at the right place at the right moment. Well, I photographed everything of importance. Now I'd like to uh, jot down these facts and figures before I forget them. You see, these are very important to me in this assignment. So I can imagine. Johnny, where did you go? I just got rid of Mr. Martin's camera. You... By the stars, you did. Johnny, what Now you... all I have left is this. Oh, no, you don't. Hey, are you crazy? Come back here. Johnny, Johnny! What's all the excitement about? Well, well I... this is my friend, Mr. Black, from the merchandising department. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Black? Do you know who that man is? Of course, he's an old friend of mine, Billy Martin. I've known him for years. You've known him for years? At least 20. Then, then he's not from Mars. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's from Fortune, Fortune magazine. He's writing a special feature article on the world's one and only rocket engine plant. But what about this? That's my portable inkwell. Inkwell? Yes, I was just about to fill my fountain pen and make some more notes. Look, see? Ink. Oh, I'm sorry about... But wait. I saw you on a television broadcast from Mars just last night. Impossible. But I did. I saw you on the experimental set, the studio. Oh, then you saw my rehearsal. Rehearsal? Yes, I was filling in for one of the actors in a little play I wrote for television. It's called The Counter-Invasion from Mars. Johnny, will you ever grow up the lone rocketeer. Oh, really? I'm awfully sorry, Mr. Martin. I guess I acted kind of stupid. Forget it, son. Shall we finish our tour through the plant? I'll see you later, Billy. Hope you get what you want. Thanks. And here is the final step, the dynamometer test. Each and every rocket engine is given a 40-minute test run under heavy load. From here, the rocket engines are sent to the main assembly plant, where, combined with the new Whirlaway Hydromatic, they form the complete power package in the famous Futuramic Oldsmobile. My, this has been thrilling. It sure has. Mr. Martin, about your camera and the notes that I destroyed. Forget about it, son. I've decided not to write that article anyway. Not write the article? But no, I thought... No, sir. I've discovered a new fortune. I'm going to get a job as an Oldsmobile salesman. Why, with this power package, this rocket engine to sell, nothing can stop me. And we'll be your first customers. That's a deal. What a thrill to take the wheel of this smart new Oldsmobile. For performance, here's the star. This is the rocket engine car. Futuramic, through and through. It has hydromatic, too. When you take the wheel of this Oldsmobile, there's a big new thrill for you.